I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. I just want to encourage somebody today. That's all I want to do. You have been in the presence of God. Those 15 minutes in the presence of God is all the sermon you need to make it for the next week. So let me just send you out with a blessing. Let me send you out with an encouragement. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. But desire the greater gifts, and I will show you an even better way. Everybody say better way. Better way. Lord, we thank you for your presence that's in this room. Thank you that you've visited us. You have ministered to us today. And now, Father, as we receive your word, may we become doers of this word and ministers unto you is my prayer. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. I want you to get this picture. Jesus is walking along with his disciples. Now, I don't know how you read this scripture. I know how a lot of people read this scripture. A lot of people believe that Jesus was walking through a cemetery, and he wasn't talking to his disciples. He was talking to the people in the graves. And he looked over at these people that are dead in their graves, and he says, the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. But you and your graves, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I don't think he was talking to a cemetery. I think he was talking to the people that were walking with him. Some of you have this vision that life's only going to be better after you die. I want you to know Jesus did not just come to earth to make life better after you die. He came to give you the abundant life while you're still living. He wants you to have a better life right now. And that's why the scripture says, I, I'll show you a better way, an even better way. I don't know about you, but I, I love the word better. I like a better deal. God bless you if you can find the same item for more money. I want to find it for less money. Because it's not about the item. It's about the bragging rights that I found a better deal than you. I want to look at you with scorn. I want to look at you with that, God bless you. I want to look at you with that attitude that I, I found a better deal. Have you ever got a better deal and kept it to yourself? When you get a better deal, you tell everybody you know. So what if you had a better day? See, if you have a better day, you're going to treat people differently. You're going to talk to people differently. Hey, you're going to, when you're, when you're having a better day, you walk differently. You know what I'm talking about. You walk down, when you're walking into the office, you got music playing in your head that nobody else can hear just because you're having a better day. Listen, okay is not what God created you to be. Look at the person next to you and just ask them, how are you doing today? Now respond. Did anybody get a response? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. We're just making it. We're yet holding on, yet holding on. Do you realize that Jesus did not come to earth so you could live the okay life? Jesus came to earth so you could live the abundant life? Now, if there is life and there is abundant life, then there must be better life. If there is life, then there must be something better called abundant. And good enough is not good enough. I'm having a good day. It's a good day today. No, no, no. I want to have a better day. And I want to have a better day today than I had yesterday. And I want to have a better week this week than I had last week. And I want to have a better year this year than I had last year. I don't know if that's the vision for your life, but that's the vision for my life. I heard uh, Pastor Craig Groeschel, pastors the largest church in America, numerically, and he said this, the greatest enemy to the life you want may be the life you're living. The greatest enemy to the life you want may be the life you're living. In other words, it's not the devil keeping you from a better life. It's not society keeping you from a better life. It's not family. It is you keeping you from a better life. And I want you to have a better day. Say this with me. It's already a better day. After that move of the Spirit, can't you say right now, it's already a better day? 
I mean, I don't care how bad pastor preaches this morning. It's already a better day because, I mean, the Holy Ghost moved. I don't care how bad the kids fought on the way here. I don't, how, I don't care how bad my husband complained that we had to go to church on Sunday morning to the early service at that. It's already a better day because God was here. And I've been in the presence of God and I've felt his love and I've felt his embrace and it's already a better day. And you're probably wondering, where does a title my day just got better. Where does a title like this come from? Well, I wish I could give you some deep theological, spiritual epiphany revelation that I had one day. I went out in the woods and these two sticks started levitating up in the air and they started spinning and they formed a cross and, and I realized right there, my day just got better. It wasn't that. It was tacos. I'm telling you, it is that simple. I walked into the church office the other day, and there is this, there's this guy, he sets up a food truck across from the church in Lebanon, and it's called, uh, I, won't, well, I won't tell you the name of it, but he serves tacos. And he's open, open some days, he's closed most days, and I walked in, and I looked, I looked at the staff sitting there, and I said, is there any chance that he's open today? And somebody leaned back, it was Roger. He leaned back and he smiled and he laughed and he said, the flags are out, he's open. And I looked and I said, it's already a better day. My day just got better. Why did my day get better? Because tacos was in my future. Was I disappointed when we got over there and realized that he was only serving breakfast burritos? A little bit. But I got tacos that night instead. My wife made tacos. Who can just praise God with me that tacos makes any, you thought I was going to go spiritual, makes any day better. Give me some tacos. I don't know what makes, what makes your day better? Tacos makes my day better. How about you, Anthony? Cake makes my day better. His day just got better. <laughs> See, I want you to live a life like every day is taco day. Every day is cake day. Every day is ice cream day. I mean, this is Sunday. Why in the world do you think they named ice cream with hot fudge and whipped cream a Sunday? Because it's supposed to be the best day, it's supposed to make your day. My day, look at somebody and say, my day got better when I sat next to you. I mean that, I wasn't sure at first, but haven't sat here for a little bit. I feel like my day's better just cause I'm sitting with you. How was your day today? Long day, bad day, tough day, terrible day, rough day, stressful day. I like this one. It's been a day. You ever just come home and say, it's been a day. I'm not going to say anything else. It's just been a day. It's been a day where I don't feel like I have what it takes. It's been a day where I feel like my life stinks. I thought things were bad. They're actually getting worse. It's been a day. It's been a day. You ever come home and you're saying the economy's doomed? Made the mistake of listening to talk radio on the way to work. Then I turn it on again on the way home from work. I'm guilty. Families falling apart. School, st school systems stink. Churches dying all over the place. My teenagers are a mess. Can we all just agree, if you have a teenager, it's a mess? And mine just turned 15 today. Today. She's 15 today. Government spring poison on all the crops. Kim won't let me eat UDF ice cream. You think I'm kidding. In our household, you don't get to eat anything until you read the ingredients. And when she flips over the UDF ice cream and it says these are biologically altered chemicals within this ice cream. 
You didn't know that. Somebody's day just got worse. Look at that. I mean, somebody is like, Pastor, it wasn't me. It's the woman God gave me. <laughs> Spraying poison on crops, UDF ice creams full of chemicals. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. What if you came home and you just said, it's been a blessed day. It's been a great day. You know what? It's a happy day. It's a supernatural day. In fact, what if you didn't wait till you came home? What if you woke up and before your feet hit the floor, you started saying, it's a blessed day. It's a happy day. It's a supernatural day. I don't expect natural things to happen in my life. I'm looking for supernatural things to take place in my life today. I'm peeking under the covers to see where God is going to give me a miracle here or here. It's a miracle day. It's a great day. A wise man once taught me. He said, you know what? I said, I said, are you having a good day or a bad day? He said, I don't have bad days. He said, I have good days and I have better days. And he said, I have more better days. I don't want to just have good days. I want to lean into better days. But here's the big question. What's taking away your better? What is stealing your better? Pessimist. Well, let me give the optimist first. I should start with the good news. Optimist. My cup is running over. God is blessing me. Pessimist. My cup is running over. Who's going to clean up this mess? It's not all your fault. You live in miserable states. I looked at a list of the 50, they rank the most miserable states, one through 50. 50 being the most miserable state in America. No surprise, it's West Virginia. That's number 50. But I started going back up the list at the most miserable states. Happiest states, happiest, like Hawaii. Man, what could, could you be mad in Hawaii? I couldn't. I mean, they go through all these states and then they get down to that last half and these are the most miserable states. Number 42, Indiana. If you're from Indiana, raise your hand. 42nd, there we go, all the way in the back. Back row, I get it. I ain't mad at you, brother. I ain't mad at you. 42, most miserable state, Indiana. Guess what number 44 is? Ohio, that's right. Look, did you hear how everybody said it? Ohio. Ohio. If you're from Ohio, raise your hand. You're the 44th most miserable state. But not to be outdone, number 45, Kentucky. If you're from, there's, if you're from Kentucky, raise your hand. Look, too crazy to know they're miserable. <laughs> so what in this list did they come up with that made a miserable state? As you get further and further down the list, there were two things that kept coming up to the top of the reason people are miserable. Now, they would talk about it like this. They would say in Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky, uh, a great number of people work a job that they don't even enjoy, they don't like, they have no purpose. So what they figured out was what made these states miserable was that the people in these states felt like they lived with no purpose. Number two, they had no sense of community. So no purpose, no community led to misery. Well, that seems like an easy problem to fix. If you want to go from miserable to better, then find your purpose and get around a group of people who have a similar purpose that you have and fulfill that purpose together and you'll go from miserable to better. In fact, you know what I've learned can get me through any day? I've had some bad days. Can I tell you what can get me through almost any day? Get me the right purpose. Remind me of why I'm here. Get me off my selfish little problems. I'm having a party, and it's called a pity party, and I'm the only one that's invited. If you'll get me out of this pity party and remind me of why God put me on this planet, all of a sudden I don't have time to pity anymore because I'm too, too busy fulfilling purpose. Get me around the right people. Do not put your, when you're having a bad day, do not get around other people having a bad day. When, you're, when you are having a bad 
today, get rid of all the doubt talkers, all the negative talkers. Get you some people who will speak faith into your bad day, purpose into your, get you around some people who will remind you who you are and whose you are. And you know what else gets me through a bad day? Presence. No, no, you missed it, not gifts. But that was good, that makes me feel pretty good too, I ain't gonna lie. No, presence. The presence of God. You can have the worst day in the world, but when it feels like God steps in the room, your day just got better. I couldn't even begin uh, to imagine the, the stories that some of you have when you walked through the doors of this sanctuary. You came into this room, you are facing real problems. You are facing horrific, terrible storms. But yet something happened when you saw everybody worshiping because that's our purpose. And then you saw you're not the only one in this, in this race. There's other people running with you. But you know what made the difference was when God stepped into the room. And now I understand why the writer says in the Old Testament, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. All it takes for my day to get better is for God to show up. And when God shows up, any day can get better. Would you like to have a better day than yesterday? Would you like to have a better week this week than you had last week? Would you like to have a better year this year than you did last year? Now, if you're going to answer yes, define better. Do you know what better is? Because better has shown up in a lot of your lives and you didn't recognize it. Because you didn't want better, what you wanted was comfortable. Sometimes better shows up in the form of work. Sometimes better shows up in the form of a storm. Here we are growing a little garden in our backyard. Every day I have to go out there, I have to turn on the water hose, and I have to water the garden. You know what? I didn't have to yesterday because there was a hurricane outside. And it was a storm, and here I am, and I'm trying to grill in the storm. I'm trying to, because uh, it's Sage's birthday, so I'm grilling for a birthday party. It's raining. I got an umbrella, and I'm, I'm over there by the grill, and the smoke's filling up the umbrella, so I'm about to get. But you know what? My plants were out there just praising the Lord. <laughs> the storm I was cursing, they were thanking God for it because they knew it was providing the rain that they were gonna grow and get stronger then they were gonna be able to produce fruit. See, there's storms you've been cursing that God has brought into your life to water something so that you can grow and produce fruit and multiply. You're about to get better. Somebody say it with me, I'm about to get better. Do you wanna be better financially? What does that look like? You better know what it looks like. If you're gonna say, I want, I want more money, for what? Know what the better financially is. Know what the better relationally is. I want our marriage to be closer, okay? Well, what if he just starts wanting to be wherever you are all the time? It won't be long, you'll be like, Lord, can you send him somewhere? Just send him somewhere. Get, he's around me all the time. And God's gonna say, you wanted to be closer? You didn't define the parameters. <laughs> what does better relationally look like? I want to be better physically. How? How? There are people who lose weight who aren't healthy. I don't want to just drop weight. I want to be healthier. If I'm going to give up good food, you know what I'm talking about? Good food. I'm not talking about healthy food because healthy food is not good food. So if I'm going to give up good food, but what, what I mean is food that tastes good. If I'm going to give up food that tastes good, I don't want to just lose weight. I want to be healthier. Everybody got on this impossible meat. Ooh, I ain't eating meat. I'm vegan. God bless your heart. I'm vegan. I don't eat meat. I eat impossible burger. Well, do what my wife did. Flip it over and read the ingredients. 
Because in that one little hamburger of impossible, it's about a whole container of salt on the inside of that. Yeah, it was a good burger. You ain't got no blood, but it's a good burger. <laughs> what does it mean to be better financially? What does it mean to be better relationally? What's it mean to be better physically? How will you know if it shows up? So let me give you a couple quick pointers. Oh, I got to go quick. It is better to have less of what doesn't matter and more of what does could it be that it's better to have less than it is to have more? I'm all for the more. I believe God for more, exceeding abundantly more. But Ecclesiastes 4, 6 says, better one handful with tranquility, peace, than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. You ever seen somebody, oh, if I just, if I got a boat, I would be happy. But then they got to work overtime to pay for the boat and work overtime on the overtime to pay for the boat storage and to pay for somebody to maintain the boat. And now they only get to enjoy it a couple times a year and they're stressed out because they got this big boat. Wouldn't it have been better to have a rowboat and have peace than have a yacht and have toil and strife and division, and you're, you're stressed out, you're burned out, your, your chest is hurting, you're, you feel like you're about to have a stroke, all because God didn't, God didn't make you buy that. You bought that. It's better to have a handful of money than to have all the coffers in the world and have stress and toil and your family falling apart. I look, at, I look at some other people, and I'm not judging them. This is just battles that they're facing. And man, on the outside, it looks like they got it all. They got all the money you could ever ask for. They got all the fame. They wear all the latest designer clothing. They, they drive the nicest of cars. And their kids are drug addicts. And their kids hate Jesus and hate the church. And I said, would I trade my life for that any day of the week? I wouldn't do it. I would rather have a handful with peace. Because you know what I've learned? You cannot put a price tag on peace. You just can't do it. There is no amount of money that can buy peace. Better a smaller opportunity. Oh, I'm believing God for great opportunities. I believe in God for promotion. Is it worth it if you lose your mind? Is it worth it if you never see your kids, if you never get to go to a baseball game with your kids, if you never get to go to a dance recital? Is it worth it? So that when you get to retirement, they're going to they're gonna check you out like a grocery store and just bring the next person in line up? Well, if I only had more friends, I get it. I want a lot of friends. I like, I like to be surrounded by people. But just know with more friends comes more drama. And some of you got drama friends that you kind of need to start distancing. Run from people who love drama or they'll put you in one of their episodes. It's a good word. It's better to have less of what doesn't matter. Everybody say matter. That's a science term matter and I looked it up and you know what matter is here's what matter is everything you see in here is matter here's matter anything that takes up space and has weight and you only have so much room and you can only carry so much so you need to determine you need to look through your life and say do I need this taking up space and adding weight to my life or do I need to sell this in a garage sale not family members. You cannot sell family members in a garage sale. <laughs> Take these kids, please. I'll make you a deal. Well, you need to go around and look and say, man, this is great. But you know what? The right thing at the wrong time is still the wrong thing. Yeah. This might be the right thing in a different season of my life. This isn't the right season for this. So maybe what I'll do is I'll release this so that when that season does come around, I can have that and enjoy it. It won't add stress to my life. It won't add weight to my life. It won't take up room in my life. The reason some of you don't feel the presence of God in your life is because stress is taking up his place. 
Your burden is taking up his space. Jesus walked into the room. There was a 12-year-old girl laying dead, Jairus' daughter. And everybody was mourning and going through all the commotion. The Bible says they were hired mourners. Back then, they paid people to cry at funerals. And so here they are. They're causing all this commotion. And Jesus walks in and says, clear the room. Clear the room. You say, was he kicking the people out? I don't think it was as much that as he was making space for a miracle. See, the miracle you need is knocking on the door. You just got to make room for it. And until you clear some drama out, people out, burdens out, until you clear some of these things out, the miracle won't step in. Well, I got all this weight on my life. Why are you carrying it? Jesus said, cast all your cares on. And the Bible says, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Take the weight and put it on him. Don't have to carry it. Here's another thought. Better is one day with God. Remember purpose, people, presence. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns. I want you to listen to David writing this. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Verse 10, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my, this is a king, folks. This is a king, a man sitting on a throne, and he's saying, I would rather be an usher, ushing people. I guess that's what they do. In the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. All social media has done is made you think that life without God is better. That what we're doing in here is boring. That what we're doing in here is taking up time. That what we're doing in here is a burden to your life. That was not David's viewpoint. He said, I would rather find one day in your house than a thousand in any other house in the world. I would rather be the person opening the door for people coming into your house than to spend any time in the tents of the wicked. My question to you, City Gate Church, do you believe this? Do you really believe? Because many don't. There are many people who think the fun is out there. The party time is out there. Well, what's in church? Rules. Stuffy. Boring. Not my church. That may have been your church, but not my church. No, you want to go to a party. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. I mean, we get in here and start saying the roof, the roof, the roof is. You say, why do you say things like that? Because in here is the presence of God. And if the presence of God is in here, joy is in here, peace is in here, power is in here, freedom is in here. If you can't get free in here, you'll never be free out there. Oh, if you're thankful for the church where there's fullness of joy. You know what I love about this place? There's forgiveness in here. The world won't forgive you. They'll cancel you. Not the church. There's hope in here, joy in here, power in here, purpose in here, provision in here. That's why I can say with David, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And if you can't say that, maybe you need to find a new house. Because I'm telling you, I get excited when it's time. When I see that countdown and I hear Miss Jasmine start singing, we are the gates to the city. When I hear that come on, I don't know about you, but something starts stirring on the inside of me. Because I say all oh, miracles are about to break out. Breakthrough is about to take place. God's about to step through the door. And my day's about to get better. If I'm preaching any Everybody give Jesus a big praise. Come on. Oh, high five three people and tell them I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here.
say it with me. My day just got better. My day just got better. Let me give you this next point. I got to hurry. Behave yourself. Behave your, we're in church. <laughs> I love it that we go to a church that the person acting out doesn't stand out. It's the person doing nothing that everybody's like, what's wrong with them? <laughs> I love that kind of church. Let me give you this point. Choose better. Is it that easy? Yeah. Choose better. I set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life. Choose better. Choose abundant. Choose life. Choose better. How do I choose better? Make better choices. So there's, see, there's a thing in life. If, if no one ever taught you this, I'm going to teach it to you now. There's a thing in life called choice and consequences. You thought it was truth and consequences. No, it's choice and consequences. Every choice has a consequence. And you can't get mad at the consequence if you made the choice. <laughs> How are you going to get mad at your parents for choices you made? How are you going to get mad at the world around you for choices you're making right now? It's like the person suing McDonald's for making them overweight. <laughs> McDonald's didn't come to your house. You pulled in the parking lot. You went through the drive-thru. You said, supersize me. <laughs> you made a choice. And that choice has a consequence. You know that song, 1967. 1967, there was a, um, a, a young black minister, a choir leader, and he was wanting to enter his choir into a contest. And so they recorded a small record album, and the song they didn't really like caught on, and DJs in California started playing it all over California. And you probably know what I'm talking about. The song went, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. About to go sister act up in here. When Jesus washed. <laughs> well, let me tell you, okay. And that, man, doesn't that just, where were you, Anthony? That was your moment, man, and you missed it. Was he asleep? Tell the truth. Was he asleep? So you say, where did that come from? It actually came from, I think it was 1777 or 1765. A long time ago, there was a clergyman, and he wrote a song, and here's what the words of his song said. Oh, happy day, my choice is fixed. Oh, happy day, my choice is fixed. This, see, if the enemy owns the choice, He'll make you own the consequences. So what you got to do is wake up and say, no, devil, you're not getting the choice today. You're not getting the choice over my attitude. You're not getting the choice over the words that come out of my mouth. You're not getting a choice over the thoughts that I think. You're not getting a choice in my actions. No, my choice is fixed. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how. My choice is fixed. My choice is fixed. I'm not going to give the devil authority over the choice so he can make me own the consequences. No, I'm going to take charge over the choice so that I get the right consequences. See, this is why the devil wants to keep you from thinking consequently. Is that pronounced right? Consequently? You're a consequently, is that right? I got teachers over here. Consequently or consequently? They don't know, see? Back to them school systems. The school system's falling apart. Consequentially. That sounds right. That's a good. He wants to keep you from thinking consequentially. 
He wants, you, he wants you to think, that's not right. It's my sermon. I will preach it the way I want. And I will make up words as I go along. Now, where was I at? Strategery. Let's talk about strategery. Here's a big idea. I'm not even paying attention. Second time, man. Close the gap between good intentions and right godly actions. Here's what Proverbs says. Don't withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to act. Don't say to your neighbor, come back later. I'll give it to you tomorrow when you have it with you now. You got some good intentions. What I'm saying is make the choice to act on them. Stop living on the then. Well, once I have enough money, then. Well, once I have the right job, then. Well, once my kids are old enough, then. Once I get married, then. Stop waiting for the then. Do it now. You have the power to make a choice and act right now. Anybody like donuts? Anybody like donuts? Look what I got for you. And these were picked up hot and fresh Preston. Open them up here, look. Hot, fresh, Krispy Kreme donuts. Look at, happy as he's been all day. Look at him. About to dance. There you go. Hold on. I got something. Take the box. Woo! He's helping me preach now. You're reaching for a donut, and God's trying to give you the box. Don't settle for good. Take better. The whole thing. The whole thing's yours. Take it. Not only that, we got plates, napkins. Come on over here, Miss Cynthia. Bring them on over here. Look, we got plates and napkins. If you want to divvy them out to everybody in your section, they can have a donut too. All right? Did your day just get better? Yeah, it did. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, it did. Anybody like gummy bears? You know what? You're faithful every day. Look at that. I want you to know in prayer last night, God said, Miss Justine is going to be on the front row. Bless her with gummy bears. That didn't happen. Manny Petty. Anybody like a Manny Petty? Now here's, oh, no, you all. When I first started this, nobody raised their hand. Now that you see I'm giving stuff away, everybody's raised. I had men raising their hands. Stop it. Pray you through to deliverance. <laughs> Manny, where, help me out, Blake. Help me out. Just run. Pick somebody up. Somebody's getting a Manny Petty at Mitchell Salon. Look at that. How cool is that? What else I got? Anybody need their car wash? <laughs> Go on back to this side. Run it. Make sure they're driving. I got, I got one last thing. Rent. <laughs> My brother. For those of you in Lebanon that didn't hear, he said, "Is you got a rent? <laughs> you got rent?" That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> My day just got better. My day, My day just got better. My week. Oh, God's blessing me. That was priceless. Wow. Wow. Anybody need help paying for your gas? Look at this. I'm going to turn around. You just tell me who. Hold on. She, yeah, okay. So here's what I got. Look, using babies. It works. Using babies, like, it works. think of the children. 
Think of the children, Pastor. I saw you, and you were making the most commotion. So I got, here you go, $50 Shell gift card. Go get you a tank of, well, not a tank of gas. Go get you a quarter tank of gas, $50. Hold on, hold on, how about this? How about this? Do you want that? I may have one more thing. But it's, hold on. Do you wanna keep that? Or do you wanna take the chance that maybe I have something better? What do you think? You wanna give it back? What are you gonna do? You gonna give it back? You got five seconds, five. So let me show you, hold on. Here's what you just did. You let go of good. So you could grab hold of $250. Let go of good and grab hold of better. And now what I want you to do is take this and bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless somebody, because when you stop living for good and you start living for better, God brings you into the abundant life where it's not just about you being blessed, God puts you in a position where you can start blessing others. So now it's just not about your day getting better, God's using you to make other people's days better. God's about to give you a bag full of some stuff that you're gonna change somebody's life, change somebody's day, change somebody's outlook, give God a big praise in this house, come on. Stand your feet all over this room, if you will. Let go of the good. Grab hold of better. As you're standing there, let me tell you one quick story about how we got here. This is before Lebanon, before Forest Park, before Lebanon. We had gone through this building I thought it was a great building. It wasn't nearly the size of either of the two buildings we're in right now. And we made um, an agreement that if the inspections turned out good, we would push forward and we would buy this building. We did the inspections. There was, there was air conditioning units with nothing on the inside of them. <laughs> they were just shelves. So the inspection didn't go great. Let me just say it like that. But I thought, man, we are desperate. We need a building. We're meeting in a high school. And, and it was Lakota West freshman at the time. And up in the upper levels, it would get so hot, people were passing out, and they wouldn't let us have water in the building. And I was just desperate. I wanted a building. And I thought, man, we could do something with this. With all its problems, we can do something. I could take you to the traffic light where I was on Tylersville Road. And I sat at this traffic light, and I heard the voice of God. And he said, if you want it, you can have it or you can have better. And I called that day and I said, this deal's not gonna go through. That was building number six. I didn't know it would turn into eight different buildings. I didn't realize that God kept shutting doors, not on bad opportunities, some of them were great, looked great, but they were good for us. And God shut the door because he said, I've got something better. See, what God saw in my future was Lebanon. What God saw in my future was Forest Park. What I don't, so here's, here's where I get excited. If God saw better all the way back then, what's next? Because he's not running out of miracles. But Lebanon would have never happened unless I would have let go of good. Forest Park would not be here today unless I let go of good to grab hold of better. We had on our, on our eighth building, we had an agreement, $9 million contract, $9 million. Something came up, we could have pressed through, but we said we just can't do it because of this. And God shut the door on good. And look at what he's done today. Better, better. And you've got something and it's good. And the enemy's convinced you that this is as good as it gets. But I've come to tell you, see, what I just did was a, that was just a, a little display in the natural. Imagine what God's got in his bag. 
And he's saying, if you'll let go of good, I'm a God of better. Let go of the good. Let go of the stress. Make space. Make room for a miracle in your life. And watch what I'll do. Let me get to this last point. I got one minute, 27 seconds. Here's my last point. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. What am I giving a chance? Psalms 118, 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So what I'm saying is every day, give it a chance. Get, make up in your mind that every day deserves a chance. Every day deserves an opportunity for God to show himself strong, for God to show himself as a miracle working God. And I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to say this. This is the day he's given to me. And we will. Guess what we will? It's a choice. I'm making a choice that no matter what comes my way, no matter what I have to face throughout this day, I'm going to rejoice in it. I'm going to rejoice in spite of it. I'm going to rejoice in the middle of it because this is the day that God has made. Here's the big idea. My day isn't better based on what I feel. My day is better based on what God said. Can I tell you what God said? My sins are forgiven and my eternity is secure. If you have nothing else to shout about, shout because you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. My day is better because Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and he is interceding for me. My day is better because my future victory is greater than my present pain. My day is better because God is for me. And if God is for me, who can be against me? My day is better because God is working all things for my good. My day is better because nothing can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. My day just got better. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do as you go home. I'm going to pray with you in just a moment. But I want you to define three things. Three things that would make your life better. See, when you, when you write down those three things, when you detail them, guess what you just got? A vision. You got a vision of better. Write it down. Can I tell you what would make somebody's day a lot better? Is if you walked in here and you don't know Jesus, but you received him as your savior and you left knowing that your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. We get excited over funny things. We get excited over a lot of things. But can I tell you what heaven gets excited about? Heaven gets excited over one who gets saved and comes back to the family of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. You know who you are. You need Jesus, and this is your opportunity. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. I want you to pray it with me. Are you ready? Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins erase my past Jesus I believe you died for me you were buried for me and on the third day you arose for me and because you live I will live the abundantly better life